Hello, everyone. We will be starting shortly. Let's wait for more people to join in. Let's give it another five to 10 minutes. Started. Doesn't look like anyone else is joining today. So today we are going to be starting a new topic and this is perhaps one of the most important topics that you will learn. It is loops, iterables and iterators. So what is a loop? A loop is when you have a certain piece of code that you want to be executed multiple times, right? So you can have a piece of code that is performing a specific function. You could also have a list and each function being performed on each member of that list. And there are many other ways in which lists can be used as we will learn uh, in a second. So there are uh, two types of main loops. The first is a for loop and the second is a while loop. These can also be used within each other as we will see later on. Okay, so common functions that are used to loop is the range function. We will also be looking at that later on. And iterable objects, so objects that can be iterated over are called iterable objects. These are arrays, lists, dictionaries, and basically most of the data structures that we learned about. So the for loop uh, iterates a list object. So it, sorry, not just a list object, but any of the data structures that we mentioned on the previous slide, uh, right over here, I can underline that. So any of these can be used. Right. So iterate a list object using for loop. Ooh. Student names list. So we make a list with a bunch of student names in there. Then we use the for loop. So we do for student name in student name list. Print student name, right? So there's a couple of important things over here. So the first is how it is written, right? So first we write for, then you write a new variable name, which will stand in place of each item as we go through the list. And then in is a keyword just like for, and then this will be the iterable object such as list and array and so on. So when you, uh, then you need to indent underneath it after you, after the colon over here, this colon, you need to put a tab indent, use the tab on your keyboard and you have, you can say if we do print student name. So what this will do is it will do this function, do this task for every item in this iterable object. So every item in this list is David, John, Sim, and Jack, right? So one by one, it will print all of these out, right? So David, John, Simon, Jack, right? It printed all of these out. So today I'm going to be taking kind of a different approach in terms of how we're gonna structure the class. So I'm going to give you an example side by side so that we don't uh, get lost and lose track, right? So. Uh, let's switch over to PyCharm. All right. Um, one second. Okay. So let's make a new list. So list. Let's call it uh, names, right? Say on um, well, says a list. Okay, so we have and let's say we also have Lucy in here, right? So, what we'll do is we'll make a loop so for 
names in oh sorry for name so this is a new variable name notice this is different from names which is which has an s in the end so in names and right this is what we were trying to do earlier so when we run this code you can see all three of these names are being printed out right so now i'm going to explain how exactly we are doing this so uh so we have one box right which is a list so this is actually a group of boxes so this is names right so there's my name in there and two other names in there excuse my handwriting and then okay so we created this so line one is done so let's move on to line two there's nothing there we move on to line three right so in here we have for name in name so we have created a new variable so we have a new box right so in here we have name also when i write a d or l just assume that i'm writing the complete name in order to save time so when we do print uh, sorry when we do for name in names so the first uh uh, member of this uh, data structure will be put into this variable right it goes in here and then we go to line number four right we go to line number four we do print name so we print out the first name so let's make an output bar output bar over here right so this will be our output so we have a over here right so what happens after this is so normally it would go to say line five right but instead of doing this what it does is it doesn't go to line five it goes back up and it says hey we are still looping right so for name in names so it checks is there another member after the current member so yes we have a d over here right so this will replace the value in here, cancel out this value. This will be changed to D, right? And then it goes back to line four and we have D in here. And like that, it will keep going and we'll also have L. So when we finally have L printed out, when it goes back up, it checks, hey, is there anything after L? No, there isn't. So it will go down to line line five once everything has been exhausted in the list and it will continue running the code after that. So we don't have any code after that. So that's where our code ends. Is everyone clear on how this loop worked? This is very important. So I want each and every one of you to understand this. Okay, I see one thumbs up. Anybody have any doubts? Okay, I don't see anything in chat. If you do have any doubts, feel free to put them in there even after I start speaking and I'll try to answer it. All right, so let's switch back to our presentation. All right. So we've done the for loop. Next, we have strings are arrays of bytes. Iterate a string using loops. So uh, I told you that strings are arrays of characters. Characters are one byte. So you can switch between those two terminologies in Python. Um, so iterate a string using a loop. So this will be very similar, right? 
so it will iterate each and every character. So let's try this one out as well on PyCharm. Um, oh. All right, so let's keep the variable name same. Let's save a little time. So, okay, so anybody wants to guess what will happen in here? You can unmute yourself and just explain it. If you don't want to type it all the way, that's fine as well. Any guesses? Uh, can, let me just uh, make a guess. Okay. Uh, it will print uh, your name, but uh, in on a column, like uh, starting from A down to uh, the same name. Yes, that is correct. So when we try to run this, it will indeed run it in a column, right? Including the space, as you see over here. So what it's basically doing is, as I explained to you in the previous lecture, a string is basically a list of characters, right? So you can think of this as the same thing, pretty much as writing this, a, uh, a comma, k, and so on and so forth, right? So when we print, uh, when we run the same code, it will do the same exact thing. It will treat this as any other data structure and print out each and every uh, character one by one. So printing is not the only thing you can do over here, right? So let's try to make a new list. So let's make num list equals, this is your one, two, three, right? So let's say we want to write a code that gives us the, the first, uh, let's say five multiples of 13 right because um, I don't know the table of 13 so what we will do is for num in num list we'll do print 13 times num does anybody want to explain to me why this code works Nobody? Okay. Um, I can go ahead and... Hello. Oh, we have someone. Okay. You can try. Okay. Like, it will take each number. It's taking each, uh, each number one by one. That is, take one, multiplies by the 13. That is, for every of the number inside my, inside the number list, it's being multiplied by 13, then it's going to be displayed in the result. Yeah, that is correct. So we take each and every number in the list, right? We're print, we're multiplying it by 13 and printing it out. So that is the correct answer. All right, so let's go back to the presentation. All right, so next up we have while loops. So while loops work very differently so how a while loop works is we have a condition after the while loop and as long as that condition is true it will keep going inside the loop and keep coming back up right so it this will be more clear when i show you an example but let's go through the some of the theoretical concepts here so while loop is used to execute a set of statements or iterate an object until the condition in which uh, until the condition in while statement is true. So as soon as the condition becomes false somehow, it will stop looping over it. So let's try to see an example, right? So we're gonna switch back over to PyCharm. All right, so let's say I want to print out all the numbers between zero and 20, right? So I'll make a new variable, i equals 20. So I'll do while, 
or and I'll make another one called J. I'll call it zero, right? While I is greater than, oh sorry, while J is less than I. Current J. Okay, I know nobody exactly knows what's going to happen maybe, but does anybody want to take a guess maybe? Please, can I take a guess? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Okay, so we have I, 20 assigned to the value of I. Why J is being, why is there is being assigned to the value of J? So now, for, it's not going to be taking, um, numbers between that um, the characters is going to be taking it one by one and for every value it takes let's say from let's say it's taking value from zero so for every value it takes it compares it and see whether that value is actually less than is actually less than i so if that value is less than i it's print out that value Okay, so that is a good guess, but let's try to run this and see what happens. So it just keeps going. That's weird, right? So why this happens is, so let's try to see why this is happening, right? So we take the annotate and okay. So we have I and we have J, right? So I is zero. J is 20. So when we do while J less than I, right? So J is not less, uh, sorry. Oh, I wrote these the other way around. So this is J, sorry. Uh, and this is a, oh. This is I. All right. So J is less than I, correct? So it will go inside this loop. This statement is true. So it goes inside the loop. It prints J. So in the output, we get zero, right? So what happens in a loop? Instead of going down, it goes back up. And it's like, hmm, this is still true. So it will go down, print zero again, and this will just keep on happening. So the problem here is that we're never increasing the value of J. To get all the numbers from zero to 20, we need to increase the value of J once we print it out, right? So I'm going to clear this. And now, I'm going to add another piece of code. I'm going to do plus equals one. Right now, let's try running this code. Now we have all the values from zero to 20, right? Excluding 20 because we used a less than sign here. So let's see how exactly we're getting this, right? So I won't do the entire loop, but I'm going to do the start of it so that you get the idea of how this loop works. All right, so we have I and we have J. I is 20, J is zero, correct? So we go while, so these two lines have been exhausted. Now we're on line number three, right? So we do J less than I. Well, is J less than I? Yes. So it goes inside the loop in the output we get uh, zero, right? Print J. So after this, this is also indented. So you can notice that this is indented and this is indented. So both of these lines are a part of the loop. So it will keep going down. So J plus equals one. So this will become one, right? So now it will go back up. So while j less than one, is one less than 20? Yes, right? So it will go down, print j, we printed it out. 
go down j plus equals one it becomes two so it will just keep going on like this up till the point it reaches 20 and when it reaches 20 j is no longer less than i and it breaks the loop does everyone understand why we needed to add this line over here Give me a yes in chat if you understood. I see a thumbs up. Okay, we see a yes. Okay, so I think everyone understands how while loops work. Awesome. So let's go to the next part. So we have while requires index to iterate through the members of object while for doesn't. Okay. So the for loop didn't need an index, right? So if we want to iterate through, let's say a list as we did in a for loop. So let's try doing that as well, right? So when we were in a for loop, what we did was we had a list of names. All right, let's just keep two names in here to keep it short. So when we wanted to print out everything in a list in a for loop, we did for name in list. Um, print name, right? So this is quite straightforward, but we can also use a while loop to do this, but for that, we will need to keep track of the index, right? So let's add some more names actually, so that it's less confusing. All right, so we have those names in there. So what we'll do is while sorry um okay so what is the size of this list uh one two three four we have i less than four so you don't need to write four so another so the better way to do this is you do names dot list and then this has a member variable called uh, length, I believe. Oh, sorry. So there's a normal function called a len, which you can use to get the length of the list, right? So this will give us the answer for, which is the list length of this list, correct? So we have print list i and then we increase it by one every time so that we can keep going forward in the list and when we press run it will give us the same exact result so does everyone understand how we can use a while loop instead of a for loop to iterate through a list if there's any doubts uh hold on for a minute to see Okay, at this point, we can take a four or five minute break. I would recommend you open PyCharm and try some of these loops out yourself or drink some water and we'll be back for nested loops. All right, I hope everyone had a good five minute break. Let's switch back to our presentation. All right. So next up we have nested loops. So 
a nested loop is a loop within a loop. So you can have as many of these nests as you want. You can have one loop within a loop, which can be another loop, and you can keep doing this. So that basically depends on the kind of problem you have and the complexity of it. So as you can see over here, so we have row count equals one, while row count less than equals six, we print out uh, the word row followed by the row count at the moment. Then we start another loop using this row count variable for star in range zero comma row count. So I will show you what this range function does in a second. So for now you can assume that it gives us a list and this print star will print out everything in that list, right? Once it prints out everything in their list, it goes down here, increases row count by one, it goes back up and it repeats the entire process again. So you can have a loop within a loop, right? So let's try recreating this code in PyCharm. We have row count equals zero while row count is less than six. Yeah, you can also have a plus in here to add to show, uh, have two things uh, printed out simultaneously. But this plus only works if the second thing over here is a string. Row count is actually an integer, so we can't use a plus. We have to use a comma instead. Both of these work exactly the same. The, the only difference is that the comma will actually add a space between them, while the plus doesn't add anything. And that the plus only works when both the things are strings or if they're both numbers, then they will be added. So we have, uh, we had four star range zero comma row count print star row count plus equals one. All right, so let's try running this code and see what it looks like. All right, so here's what we're trying to do, right? So for row zero, we have row count is zero, right? At the beginning, row count less than equal to six, this will be true. So let's make those boxes again. So I'll uh, mark row count as R star as s okay all right so we have row count is zero right so we have while row count less than equal to six well is zero less than equal to six yes so we have output Okay, so it will print out row. And then zero, right? Then it will go to this line. We have four star in range zero comma row count. So let's see what this range variable does for us, shall we? So what if I have, let's say, Range zero comma six. So what this does is 
it gives me a list So it will give us a list from of all numbers between zero and six. The first one is included. The second one is not included. So it is the same as when we were sl uh, slicing in the last lecture, if you remember. So it will be zero, one, two, three, four, and five, right? So that's why when you see over here for row zero, it didn't print out anything because when range zero comma zero, well, there's nothing between that, right? So uh, it will print out nothing. When we have range zero comma one, it printed out just one. And when it was two, it printed out two, three, it printed out three and so on and so forth. So is everyone clear on what range is doing? and how these nested loops are working. If not, I can uh, repeat any part or the entire thing if required. I, I don't mind doing that. Just please let me know. All right, so I don't really see any doubts from anybody. So I'm going to assume everyone understood that. If not, feel free to still put questions in chat. In the meantime, we're going to switch back over to our presentation. So we have nested loops, which we already did. Next up, so this is the output as I showed you before. Right, so they started at row count one, which is why their first row has a zero. We started at zero, so that row had nothing, right? So iterable functions, range returns set of numbers, right? So this is what I was explaining. So for i in range five, it will automatically assume the first letter is zero. So I can show you real quick. So range zero comma five and range five are the same exact thing. So if you don't, if you only give range one number, it assumes that the start is zero and that the number you have given is the number you want to go until, right? So when we do for i in range five, it gives us the same answer as for i in range zero comma five would have given us, right? So similarly, when we do one comma four, one is included, four is not included, and we have each and every number in there. So then we have a third option in here as well, which is the step. So the step basically is, uh, is being added to that. So the default step is one. So let me clear this real quick. So for, for example, range zero comma five can also be written as, uh, can also be written as range zero comma five comma one, because we're always increasing the number by one. But if we make this two, it will skip a number in between. So it goes one, it skips two because we're adding two, right? So one plus two is three, three plus two is five and so on and so forth. So does everyone understand uh, the two optional options and the one mandatory option that we have in range? This, These are some of the most important topics in uh, coding in general. So be sure you do understand each and everything. If there's even a slight doubt, uh, I would love to answer your questions. All right, so I don't see anything. So, okay, I see something, I think. May you please repeat? Okay, I can repeat that. So 
uh, I can just show you an example for better understanding. All right, so let's switch back over to PyCharm. We have for i in range i j k. Let's make oh no, we should probably change this to another variable. Let's call it z. we'll have to define i j and k so for now let's make them this so um actually let's just use numbers to not make it more complicated so all right so we have this right all right so we do print i okay is everyone clear on what this will do? Oh, sorry, this will be one, not zero. So is everyone clear on what this will do or no? So this will essentially do the same exact thing as this loop. So this is called the step. The third value is called the step. So when you're climbing a stair, like think of an uh, uh, loop as a stair, right? You're climbing. So you, what can you do when you're climbing a stair? You can either climb one stair at a time or you can skip a stair, like right? you can jump over one step every time and you can do two steps at a time. Maybe you have very long legs and you can do three steps at a time. So let's try to see what difference the steps makes. So we have 0, 10, 1. When we try running this code, we get, um, right, so we're getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 0 to 9, right? So 10 is not included, 0 is included, and the step is 1. We're increasing by 1 every time. So let's try changing this one to a two. Let's see how this changes our code, right? Oh, so this became much shorter, right? So what is happening here is instead of adding a one, we're adding a two every time. So it starts from zero, goes all the way to 10. If it is 10 or greater, it doesn't take that value. So we have zero plus two, two, two plus two, four, four plus two, six, six plus two, eight. And then eight plus two is 10. And then we saw that 10 is not included, right? So it will finish at eight and this will be the answer. Similarly, if we try doing three, it will go zero, three, six, nine. Is everyone clear now on what this step does? Lucy and Quena, do you have, okay. Awesome. All right, so next part of this assignment. So we have iterable functions continued. We have the key dot keys dot value dot iter keys dot items for iterating dictionaries. Enumerate to convert a list into iterable list. And there's many more such iterable functions like range, right? So range is just one of these iterable functions, which range is the most useful, I would say, but these are also useful. We won't be going into details about these particular uh, functions. And this is something you can read up on your own. I will be giving links at the end of the lecture as I always do. Um, and you can click on those links and hopefully uh, learn more about this. So next we have the break statement. So what if we want to terminate? Oh, I think we have a question in chat. Oh, never mind. So break statement in Python terminates the current loop and resumes execution at the next statement. So what happens is in a break statement is that uh, if we encounter a break statement during the loop, even if the loop is not yet completed, it will go outside the loop 
and just break it anyways, right? So let's try looking at an example where this might be useful, All right? So if you remember at the start, we talked about how while loops require a conditional statement, right? So can anyone tell me if this is a fair statement? Is true a conditional statement? Yes or no in the chat. Quickly, just whatever you think. Is true a conditional statement? Can we write this? Okay, so I don't see, okay, I see a no, okay. Uh, yes, okay, so true is a conditional statement. It is one of the two simplest uh, conditional statements. The two simple conditional statements are either true or false because they do have a condition, but we just don't need to find out anything about it. It's just there, it's true or false, right? So let's say we want to terminate the loop once we encounter, let's say uh, fif 15, right? So if I equal to equal to 15, so this checks if it is equal to 15, we do break. And then we can also, just to keep track, we can print I plus equals one. Okay, um, let's try running this loop, see what happens. And it prints out everything until 15. So let's try seeing why this happened. Right, so let's make those boxes again. We have I, which is zero. Right. And this is the only variable we have in this uh, loop. So while true, well, this is true. So we don't really have anything to check here. So it goes inside no matter what, right? So if I equal to equal to 15, well, is zero equal to 15? No. So it go, it skips this uh, fourth line and it goes to the fifth line because it only goes inside if the statement is true, if we remember from previous lectures. So we, oh, we print out the I. Um, okay, so we have zero over here, right? Now it will get, it will also go to this line. And then it increases by one, goes back up here, back to where the loop started. Well, while true, so this is still true. It won't really change. So we will always keep going inside the loop. So is I 15? No. So it will keep doing this until we reach 15, oh sorry, 14, right? So we have printed out 14. This is where we print it out. We go to the next line. It changes to a 15. Now, when we go back up, it's while true. Well, this is still true. If I equal to equal to 15, well, yes, I is finally equal to 15. So we go inside here for the first time and it says break. So what the break does is it breaks the loop. So you go to line seven, which in this case doesn't exist, but if there was a line seven, it would go straight to that line after that. So does everyone understand what a break is doing and why it's useful? because sometimes the, there can be times where while true is used. I still use while true to this day. It's a very common statement and you just have to be sure you're breaking it at some point. All right, so moving on to the next part of the lecture. We have the continue statement. 
So the continue statement is very similar to the break statement, but instead of breaking the loop, it simply restarts it, right? So let's try to go back to PyCharm and see why this could be useful, right? Okay, so let's say we have a bunch of grades, right? Zero, 50, 90, 85, 45, 60, all right? So what we want to do is we want to print out all the grades except when the grades are less than 40 then we don't want to print them out so let's try making this happen right so while oh, so we're iterating over a list so a for loop will be easier for us to use so for grade in grades all right so we do print grade let's just make sure our code is working properly yes it prints out everything but we don't want this 35 or the zero right both of these values are uh, less than 40 and that's not what we wanted to do so we're going to add a line here before this and say if grade is less than 40 continue so what this will do is it simply skips everything underneath it and just restarts the loop so when we run it now we don't have the values less than 40 anymore because it never re reaches this print statement when the grade is less than 40 because it does continue so let's try to see how this happens all right so we have uh, I'm not going to write the list. I'm just going to write the grade, right? We can all see the list over here. This is the list. So for grade in grades, it picks up the first value right over here. So it takes zero, right? If grade less than 40, so it goes here, it checks. Is grade less than 40? Well, yeah, zero is less than 40. So it goes inside the if statement and it does a continue. So the continue prematurely takes us back to the loop above. So now we'll go to the next value. So this will change to 50. Okay. Now we'll go back to line number three. Is grade less than 40? Well, no, 50 is not less than 40. So we skip line four and we go straight to line five this time and we print out 50, which is being printed out right over here. Similarly, we keep going for 90, 85. And when we encounter 35, again, this will be less than 40. So it won't be printed, right? So that is how we reached our answer. So is everyone clear on how continue works and can be useful? All right, I think uh, that is all we have for today. All right. Let's go back to our slides just to make sure we got everything. We have uh, done everything that we had in this class, so I'm going to stop recording.